Soon the European Space Agency ESA will launch its new Earth observation satellite called AEOLUS. Using cutting-edge laser technology, AEOLUS will provide near real-time observations of wind profiles across the globe. These will improve the accuracy of numerical weather prediction and climate modeling and advance our understanding of global atmospheric dynamics. Aeolus is uh, one of the uh, Earth explorers that is going to look at the Earth, trying to understand the wind profiles globally. And that's the first, it doesn't exist yet. The, the whole idea was that we only have wind measurements on very different uh, small spots on the Earth, and we didn't have it globally. So the mission scientists have been asking uh, for this because it's a gap in our measurement system. The mission aims to expand our knowledge of our atmosphere and weather systems. The others will achieve this by providing global observations of wind profiles from space, providing data which has never been available before. It's unknown ground, it's what we call uncharted uh, territory. So uh, we are the first agency trying to get uh, a satellite in orbit that looks at the Earth with a laser and trying to understand the wind profile, so the direction, the height and the wind speed. And therefore improving the weather forecast. Because nowadays we only have at single points balloons that measure the wind or airplanes that give us some data or at fixed points, at discrete points. This will look down to the Earth in a polar orbit, will dump every 90 minutes the data to Svalbard that will be distributed to all the European meteorological institutes and then when you're sitting at home on your couch you watch through the television and you see a weather forecast that is much better than we have it today. Aeolus will fly in a sun-synchronized polar orbit 320 kilometers above Earth's surface. Its data will be sent to ESA's Svalbard ground station located in the archipelago halfway between Norway and the North Pole every 90 minutes. The satellite's main instrument is Aladdin. Yes, well, the way the Aladdin instrument works is to eject uh, an ultraviolet beam down through the atmosphere and then particles of moisture in the atmosphere at various levels are, are, are in motion because of the wind and the, the system measures the backscatter from those particles using the Doppler effect and can detect the wind speed at the various altitudes. And then that's the way the system operates. The development of Aeolus has been a long and difficult process, with new and cutting edge technologies designed, developed and tested on the ground. It, it, is, it, is, it has been a very difficult uh, challenge, let's say. It's, it's, it's a long life because it, it exists already for 16 years, the program. And when we first had the part of the instrument, when we switched it on, it worked. Then we put it in vacuum and it stopped working. And no one had realized that we needed oxygen inside the satellite to keep the laser active. So uh, it was quite a challenge. So we had to develop a whole new set of techniques it's maybe a bit too detailed to go in all the details, but as a lot of technology has been developed, put in this nice uh, little satellite which is behind me. Aeolus is another ESA Earth Explorer mission aimed at pioneering new technology while providing useful data about our ecosystem. It showcases the technological expertise of the European space industry and ESA's objective of monitoring and understanding the planet we all live on. The main challenge for us has been within the, within the development of the Aladdin instrument. There's a very high powered ultraviolet laser system in there. It is an inherent part of the instrument. And the technology behind that laser system, the development of a stable laser, high powered laser beam, and the optics that then focus and divert that beam into through the system is, is very critical and that's been a very key part of the development. We've, yeah, after many years and much hard work across the European industry, we've, we've overcome those problems. We've got some new development and through coating technology on the optical surfaces to protect them. And we've now got a stable system that's been fully tested on the ground and we're ready to go. 
The tracking of air pollution is also part of the European Union's air observation program, Copernicus. One of the satellites that gave scientists massive amounts of data on atmospheric pollution was Envisat. This satellite used several spectrometers to detect ozone and trace gases in our atmosphere. The latest satellite, the Sentinel-5 precursor mission, was recently launched and builds on that legacy of Envisat. So we started this precursor mission because the scientists wanted continuity of data. At the moment, we only have one spacecraft uh, doing that job for us, which is OMI, and OMI is coming towards the end of its lifetime. The next uh, uh, missions that will do this job is Sentinel-4 on metopsate generation, which will only be launched in early 20s. In the meantime, to ensure a continuity of data, we need Sentinel-5 precursor. It will be the only such mission uh, doing this job uh, uh, until then. Sentinel-5P is a, a precursor to the Sentinel-5 mission, which should be launched uh, around 2021. Uh, but it's not only a precursor, it's also a gap filler, because it's filling the gap uh, uh, based on the data that we have uh, coming from Gomez, Kiermaki and Omi measurements uh, towards uh, this future Sentinel-4 and Sentinel-5 missions. Sentinel-5P is the first atmospheric chemistry mission within Copernicus. Its main instrument is a state-of-the-art spectrometer called TROPOMI, which will be used to detect trace gases in our atmosphere. With Sentinel-5P and TROPOMI, Copernicus will dramatically improve operational atmospheric surveillance.